and we will jump right in. Okay, welcome everyone. This is Creating Beautiful Skin from the Inside Out. My name is uh, in Spanish, for my Venezuelan friends who are here, Morela de Vost, but in, in the U.S., I introduce myself as Morella de Vaux. Um, my dad was born in Vermont, so we're the de Vaux clan from Vermont. Um, this, is, uh, this is a class that I've never taught in this way, and I am very excited about what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So let me just share my screen because I have some... Uh, slides that I want to take you through and so um, if you are on the phone I'll do my best at describing what the slides say I want to invite you to uh, grab a journal and a pen or a piece of paper so that you can take notes and um, and there's also going to be a writing exercise in about like towards 7.45, 7.50, we're gonna do a writing exercise to help you in your own exploration. So this is Creating Beautiful Skin from the Inside Out. Uh, I am a counselor, I'm a hypnotherapist, I'm also a holistic health coach, and as you perhaps know, I have my own personal story of healing my skin it took me uh, many years to figure it out. And um, right around the time that I was getting my master's in counseling, I was working hard on my skin. Then I became a holistic nutrition coach. And it was right around that time that I figured it all out. And that was about 13 years ago. Um, is that right? Yeah. 12, 13 years ago, just about. Okay. So let's dive right in. Um, what we're going to be talking about tonight, uh, I want to tell you my story, how this all happened for me, um, and I'm going to take you through the four pieces of the puzzle, what I consider the four pieces of the puzzle to healing the skin naturally, and then how to bring it all together. So I'm going to try to move kind of quickly through, uh, through the slides because there is a lot of information. If I move too fast, I'm going to leave questions at the end, uh, some time hopefully for questions at the end. I'm going to try to get it all done in like uh, an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes to have some time for questions. So hopefully you can stay uh, for, for all of that time. And if you can't, just email me, send me whatever questions you might have. And at the end, I'm going to tell you about um, how I can support you, how we can do this together, because sometimes it just, it can be a lot, and I'm going to be sharing a lot of information with you. Okay, so let me tell you, let's start with my story. As you can see on the left, um, you can see my cystic acne. I battled my cystic acne for over 12 years. Um, my acne started in, right around 1994, 1995 when I was in college. I had never had acne before then. There's a high school friend of mine here on the, in the class and she knows I never look like this in high school. It really started in college for me. And, you know, so it started around 1995, 94, 95, and I think it was around 1998 that I just said, all right, I need to do something about this acne. This is not just a pimple. It's not going away. So I went to the doctor. I started going, getting monthly facials, you know, with a cosmetologist. Sometimes the facials look like they help. The doctor said, no problem. We'll just put you on birth control. And I had to change birth control pills several times because it wasn't really helping. And after three years of being on birth control, um, right around 2001, I had just moved to the US, I was going to grad school, and I felt awful. My acne was not any better, my hormones were not any better, the birth control wasn't helping in any way. So I stopped the birth control, and I realized the day I decided to stop the birth control, I realized, wait a minute, I've been taking these pills, hoping that the pills are going to override whatever it is my body is doing. Obviously, my body is doing something, it's creating this acne, and the pills are trying to override that, and it's not working. So there must be a way in which I can help my body heal. And that got me in a second wave of exploration, and I started to experiment with my food, one day I'd think, okay, it must be meat. I need to be a vegetarian. 
So I'd quit eating meat, and of course that didn't help. Then I would decide maybe I need to be gluten free. So I would quit gluten and do that, and that didn't help. I became a raw foodist, and that didn't help. That which means I was eating all raw food. You know, sometimes you'd think that maybe something was a little bit better, but nothing really made a difference. And so, in 2005, I start. I enrolled in the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I was adding nutrition coaching to my counseling background, and I was diving more deeply into understanding how the body works and how did the body heals. And I started to start piecing together, understanding what acne and the skin problems are really about. And so at this point, again, we're talking 2005, 2006, this is already 10 years since my acne had started. And so things started slowly improving, but this picture that I took right here on the left, that was April of 2007. So I was already in the journey of studying nutrition coaching, I was already understanding a lot of these things, but this picture was still in 2007. Then in the fall of 2007, the final piece kind of came about, and I'm going to tell you about that. And within, I want to say weeks, but you know, at most two or three months, my skin was completely clear and I never had acne again. And I took this picture on the right shortly after that when the, the greenery returned in Burlington and Vermont, I, uh, my skin looked like that. So within, you know, after 12 years of having skin like I have on this picture on the left, within a few months, I looked like the person on the right. Massive, massive difference. So, let me tell you what I learned through my experience that doesn't work. And this, you know, some, this, I'm going to touch on, on different things, not just about acne, but essentially what I have found doesn't work for healing the skin. Treating the symptom doesn't lead to healing. So whether it's externally through lotions, getting facials like I did every month, using retin, retin-A cream, steroid creams, or internally, because taking birth control or Accutane or steroids or, you know, even these very intense medications that are for uh, autoimmune conditions, methotrexate and Humira and Enbrel, these are intense medications. And all of them are simply looking to treat the symptom. None of these address the cause. What also doesn't work is haphazard diet changes like I did, you know, cutting out gluten, then dairy, then sugar, meat. You know, you might see a little improvement, but then you realize that doesn't address the cause. What also doesn't work is, you know, picking, scratching at your skin. If you've ever had acne, you know the compulsive squeezing, pinching, popping that you do on your skin. And what also doesn't work is hiding it, like with psoriasis and eczema and really bad uh, skin conditions. You know, we try to hide it. We try to hide it with um, makeup. We try to hide it with sleeves. So hiding doesn't work. So all of these, um, you know, I put an asterisk on, on the top of this slide to say, you know, some of these things might work for some people some of the time. They might treat the symptom, you make some diet changes and it might work for a little bit, but it doesn't work for most people. And it certainly doesn't address the root cause for anyone. So none of these things address the root cause of why we have skin problems. So in essence, what's happening is your skin is talking to you, whether it's acne, hives, rashes, psoriasis, whatever it may be, your skin is talking to you. And the question is, are you listening? And so today I'm gonna help you understand what it is that your body, your, your, your body and your skin is trying to tell you. I think my, my, my way of thinking about the body is that all of our symptoms are wonderful messengers. And so for us who have skin problems, our bodies are really good at giving us very clear messages. So we need to start listening and paying attention to what messages our body, in this case our skin, is trying to give us. And this is kind of the underlying piece of everything I'm going to share with you today. Your skin is a reflection of your inner ecosystem. Beautiful skin 
comes from the inside out. That's why, you know, you do a, a facial, might, you know, for the next few days, it might be a little bit better. But everything that's happening on your skin is coming from the inside. So it makes no sense to try to address the, the issue, to try to put a cream, a steroid cream to cut the, you know, quit the itching or the, the rash. It doesn't work. You have to work from the inside out. So what I learned is that there are four pieces of the skin health puzzle. There are the four things that helped me heal my skin. And for the last, you know, I've been doing this work now for, is it 13 years? About 13 years. Um, I've seen these are the four pieces that underlie every skin health issue. And in many cases, other health issues as well. But we're going to apply them to the skin specifically tonight. So the first piece is what, what's called intestinal permeability or a leaky gut. And I'm gonna to explain to you what intestinal permeability is, how it works and why it shows up on the skin. The second piece is a congested liver, elevated toxicity. When the liver's burden, things tend to show up in your skin and other places as well. So I'm gonna tell you how that all works and what to do about it. The third piece is chronic inflammation. And so anything that is red, painful, itchy, hot is a classic sign of inflammation. Think about uh, a twisted ankle. You know, it gets hot, swollen, painful. That's inflammation. All of these symptoms on our skin are signs of inflammation. So we're going to talk about how it happens and what to do about it. And then there's a fourth piece that I'm going to save towards the end. I'm going to take you through the first three, and then we're going to touch on the fourth one. So let's start with what is intestinal permeability and, you know, what does it all look like? So all skin problems begin in the intestines, all of them. If you have a skin problem, there's something going on in your intestines. And this is why, you know, this is the first step. You can put all the lotions you want on your skin it's not going to address the underlying issue in your intestines. So where does it all start? It starts with, you know, anytime we've taken antibiotics, I had pneumonia when I was four years old and I had very heavy antibiotics. Then I had my wisdom teeth removed and I had injected antibiotics. I had, you know, whenever we've had an infection, we get antibiotics. We have pesticides in our environment, in our food. We have genetically modified foods any food that is genetically modified is doused with glyphosate, which is a heavy, heavy pesticide. And we know that anybody living in the US today has glyphosate in their intestines and all of these things, antibiotics, pesticides, and you know, the, the glyphosate in the genetically modified foods is also killing, you know, if it kills little critters on the plants, guess what it does inside the intestines? It kills our intestinal flora. So uh, all of these things are attacking our intestinal flora, plus a diet that is too processed, too much sugar, too much bread, too much fried food, too much processed meat, excess meat, too much alcohol, and processed food in general. So what this does, it starts a cycle. So I'm going to walk you through the cycle, but this is what it, the whole thing looks like. So all of these things start to decimate our intestinal flora, the healthy bacteria that part of their most significant role is they help digest our food, they extract nutrients, they make it possible for little nutrient particles to be absorbed into the circulatory system. Once the bacteria are weakened, then our, intest our digestion starts to suffer, we can't absorb nutrients. The other thing that happens immediately is that other bad bacteria, fungus, like yeast, fungus, and parasites can thrive. And so it starts to alter the ecosystem inside the intestines. These things together make it for your, make your digestion increasingly weak, and it starts to weaken your intestinal walls. And this is where inte uh, intestinal permeability begins. When your food molecules are not getting fully digested into small nutrients, all of a sudden you can get undigested Food particles, if you're looking at the bottom right in that yellow uh, square, undigested food particles then can escape the intestine and get absorbed 
into the bloodstream. Now, this isn't the nutrient that your body recognizes as a nutrient. It's not vitamin C. It's not vitamin A. It's not an amino acid or an essential fatty acid. It is maybe you know, a whole strawberry molecule, and your body doesn't recognize it. It's essentially a toxin in your circulatory system. So these undigested food molecules are toxins in your flu in your circulatory system. They're increasing toxicity. They're also increasing inflammation because now your body starts to have potentially an immune response to this molecule. It might trigger an allergy. It might trigger pain. So what you start to see in the next green text is that you start to have maybe pain, maybe allergies, maybe skin reactions, maybe autoimmune conditions. And so this becomes kind of a vicious cycle where our lifestyle with processed foods, with pesticides, you know, they weaken our intestinal flora, the bad guys thrive, our digestion weakens, our gut, our intestines become leaky. So food molecules you know, uh, get absorbed into the blood circulatory system. And this just becomes a cycle where inflammation increases and what was okay before, you know, it gets worse and worse and worse with time. And if you haven't, you know, read between the lines or kind of heard uh, what I, my message beneath what I'm saying, um, this is the cycle that initiates autoimmune conditions. So from you know, food allergies, environmental allergies, arthritis, um, and then all of the skin issues that you and me and we've all dealt with all the way to autoimmune conditions can have this uh, cycle as a core um, initiating or deton deton detonator is what I want to say. Okay. So this is inter intestinal permeability. We're going to talk about what to do about this in a minute because the second piece is a congested liver. In other, way, in other words, when you have a congested liver, you have elevated toxicity because one of the primary roles of your liver is to clean out the blood among many other things. So this all starts, of course, you've got leaky gut because you've got now these, you know, F floating food molecules in your circulatory system. And in addition to that, we have an environment that's, again, full of pesticides, there's full of food chemicals. Uh, we've got fragrances, we've got carcinogenic chemicals and hormone disrupting chemicals like plastics and Teflon on our pans and fire retardants on our couch and our mattress and our pillow, our computers. We've got body care items that have sodium laurel sulfate and PCBs and parabens and we've got household cleaners with bleach and so you get the picture. We have far too many chemicals in our environment that have never been tested for the collective toxicity. If they've been tested at all, they've been tested on their own. But we have thousands and thousands of chemicals in our environment that were not in our environment 100 years ago or 150 years ago. And of course, they've been increasing. So now we've got a digestive system that's burdened and weak, leaking things into the circulatory system. And we've got the burden of the environment on the liver. So what happens is all of this, of course, results in too many toxins to filter from the body. You've got all of these things in your circulatory system and your digestive system. So the liver becomes overwhelmed. The liver just cannot keep up. You can imagine the liver like um, a juggler. It has all of these functions and all of these things that it has to juggle. After a while, it says, I can't, you can't throw another ball at me. I can't do it. And so it starts to set one on the side. So your blood is not well filtered because the liver, you know, becomes too busy, too congested. And as the blood isn't well filtered, these toxins continue to float around your skin. Uh, so, sorry, float around your circulatory system, and some are going to come out through your skin. And so that, you know, kind of oozing of the skin, the, the rashes, the irritation on the skin is partly that toxin release. It is also, you're going to see, it is an inflammatory reaction. So we're going to see this in a minute. But the other thing, too, is that these you know, free-floating toxins, the body very wisely, safely tries to 
set them away in fat tissue because they're better off hidden away, stored away in fat tissue where they're not going to interfere with vital organs. They're not going to go into the brain or the heart, you no know, nervous system. So as much as the body can, it's going to try to store these toxins away in your fat tissue, but then it also starts to compound the hormone disrupting effect. So then you just, again, have a, a vicious cycle of too many toxins that are free, free floating. And as long as we're not cleaning out our environment, you know, it, the cycle never stops. So then the third piece is chronic inflammation. And so what we have is all of these environmental toxins plus a stand, the standard American diet that's very high in processed foods, lots of sugar, lots of alcohol, lots of bread, lots of fried foods, all of these things. Both of these things can contribute to perpetuate the leaky gut and to perpetuate a con congested liver. So you've got this formula of toxins, not great food, making things worse and worse for the digestion, you know, the intestines and for the liver. And so it essentially results in chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation, the way it expresses itself for those of us who have skin problems, we got that, you know, kind of gene for skin conditions, it shows up in our skin. And, you know, so the genetic factor is that I like to call it, you know, if you've got a family history of skin issues, that's essentially your Achilles heel. Where chronic inflammation is going to show up is in your Achilles heel. Other people have the Achilles heel of heart disease. So their chronic inflammation is going to show up in the form of high cholesterol, for example. Other people have the arthritis gene. So their chronic inflammation shows up in arthritis or allergies or whatever. So one of the things that I like to say to people like us who have skin issues is that we have a really good communicator in our skin. For some people, chronic inflammation becomes silent and they don't even know about it until they have a major diagnosis, you know, a heart attack, um, you know, God forbid even cancer or an autoimmune condition where all of a sudden things go really, really bad. So in some regards, you can thank your skin for being a really, really good communicator. Your body is very sensitive, your skin is very sensitive and it's letting you know things are not okay. So how do we then start healing the skin? We need to start by flipping this cycle around, reversing the strand. We need to start to address the leaky gut, the congested liver, and the inflammation essentially by helping the, liver, the, the intestines heal, helping the liver recover, helping to reduce the inflammation by um, eliminating toxins and improving our diet and a whole bunch of things. So let's dive right into that. So healing the gut, and you might want to take some notes on this one. So healing the gut starts with recolonizing your intestines. And you do that by eating fermented foods, you know, especially if you can make them yourself, uh, raw sauerkraut, kimchi, making your own very potent yogurt, making your own kefir, so fermented foods is the source of the natural probiotics. This is your natural flora uh, armies that you can use to recolonize your intestines. And of course, taking a probiotic, which is why there's a little asterisk there. And take a sip of my tea, hold on. So recolonizing your intestines with fermented foods and a probiotic is the first step. Then, you want to feed your good guys. You want to feed your healthy flora and sweep the streets. So fiber, you know, has a sweeping action, kind of a cleansing action throughout the intestine. But they're also the number one food of healthy bacteria. So your flora needs lots of fiber. But pe when, I, when people hear fiber, they think of beans and, you know, whole grain bread. The best fiber is in the form of kale, spinach, celery, cucumbers, you know, the peel of an apple, broccoli. These are the best sources of fiber. And psyllium husk is another phenomenal source of fiber. Great, great, great for cleaning out the intestines. Then 
you want to reduce inflammation. And we're going to talk a bit more about inflammation in a minute, but some of the foundational pieces to reduce inflammation is eating more leafy greens. So again, kale, spinach, collards, um, romaine, lettuce, parsley, cilantro, you know, all of these um, greens. Eating wild caught fish, small fish. So we're talking about sardines, anchovies, herring. Um, and the small fish is because it doesn't have the lifespan in the water to accumulate heavy metals like mercury. So sardines, uh, anchovies, etc. Colorful foods, blueberries, uh, tomatoes, strawberries, things with deep pigments. And again, anything that's green is going to fall in this category. And an omega-3 supplement. Omega-3 is a lot of times the number one thing missing for people who have skin issues is omega-3s. And that is one place to start, super, super important. Then you wanna start with the bad guys. So the bad bacteria, the parasites, the yeast, they feed on sugar and processed foods, especially sugar, especially foods in high, very high in carbohydrates. So you wanna, um, sorry, I'm just checking my notes. You wanna um, make sure to reduce the sugar, reduce the processed foods in your, uh, in your diet. The next step is rebuilding the intestinal wall. So now you're recolonizing your intestines, you're feeding the good guys, you're reducing inflammation, you're you know, trying to starve the bad guys. And also the more that you take uh, probiotics and you feed the good guys, your healthy bacteria are gonna be your first line of defense to combat some of the bad bacteria, parasites, et cetera. Um, but then you have to rebuild the intestinal walls. It's like you know putting up a new coat of plaster against the intestinal lining. And that happens through collagen and protein. So the first uh, kind of element for that is making your own bone broth. Um, I've been talking about bone broth for over 10 years, and now it's a thing. Bone broth and collagen. And it's the, the reason it's become a thing is because uh, health practitioners increasingly have become aware of the huge issue of intestinal permeability and that we need more collagen uh, in the form of bone broth or collagen in a supplement. And the, the other um, nutrient that is an essential amino acid, it's called L-glutamine. You can also take it as a supplement and you take it at night before bed and the intestines then use it to rebuild the intestinal wall as opposed to absorbing it into the bloodstream. And then the other piece is assessing candida yeast overgrowth. You know, for a lot of people with skin challenges, many, many of us have a candida yeast overgrowth. And so there's a whole assessment that you can take to see where you score. And if you do have a candida um, problem, then you really need to uh, eliminate sugar, process sugar, refine sugar, process carbohydrates, for a few weeks and only eat you know, fruit and minimal amounts of, of sweet vegetables and fruit uh, while you help your, your body overcome the candida yeast. But that is a whole big conversation that um, if, you want, if you have questions, you can ask me about that. So the next step, healing the liver. So this is all about boosting your body's ability to detoxify. And it starts with chlorophyll. So anything that is green is rich in chlorophyll, and chlorophyll is the number one substance that nature provides to help regenerate the liver. The more greens you eat, the healthier you're making your liver. So green vegetables in all forms and shapes. Chlorella and spirulina, these are algaes, and so you can get them in powder form and add them to food or take them as a supplement. They're also heavy metal chelators. They pull heavy metals from your body, so they have an extra kind of detoxifying effect. Wheatgrass is also powerfully healing for the intestine and for the liver. It's kind of a con very concentrated form of chlorophyll. The next piece is taking bitters because bitters stimulate the liver. So bitter herbs like burdock, dandelion, mustard leaves, artichoke, you can eat these or you can also get them in herbal extract in tea and you can you know, add them to your daily 
tea habits or supplement habits. And then there are liver detox support herbs and supplements. Milk thistle is kind of the king to help rebuild the liver. Alpha lipoic acid is an antioxidant that very powerfully helps in liver regeneration. Using lemon and lime juice on a daily basis, to me, there's no possible detoxification protocol without using lemon and lime. Of course, doing juicing, juicing vegetables especially, more than fruit. So celery, cucumber, broccoli, um, carrots and beets, uh, cilantro and parsley, all of these um, are phenomenal things to juice for detoxification. And then there's something called an olive oil flush, which is taking olive oil at night before bed. Usually it's good to do a certain preparation um, in anticipation of the doing an olive oil flush, but that's also another big conversation. But you can look into it if you, if you wanna do that on your own. Then uh, additional liver support in terms of nutrition, is uh, consists of eliminating sugar, alcohol, and grains for two or three weeks because sugar, alcohol, and grains are really congesting to the liver. You know, if you want to get fatty liver, you can either do it through alcohol or you can do it through eating a lot of sugar and grains. And both alcohol, sugar, and grains are going to give you fatty liver disease. So to help the liver regenerate, you need to eliminate sugar, alcohol, and grains for two to three weeks and adding lots of healthy fats to help keep the liver flushing. So fats from nuts, seeds, olives, avocados, coconut, um, and you know, also some fish, uh, like the fish we've mentioned, sardines, anchovies, et cetera. And additional support can be in the form of thing, uh, acupuncture. You can also get massage. We can help with uh, detoxification. And there's something called a castor oil pack. So that you get castor oil and you get a piece of wool or unbleached cotton and you, you know, dampen the, the wool with the castor oil and then you put it on your liver and you wrap yourself in saran wrap. And so it's uh, understood to help the liver detoxify. It's really messy. I've done, uh, I, I used to do a lot of castor oil packs when I was working on my acne. I haven't done one in many years, but um, it's very nourishing to the liver. Then, as we move on from healing the liver, we move into addressing inflammation. So as you're tackling, of course, rebuilding the intestines, you're already starting to tackle the inflammation problem. And as you help the liver regenerate and reduce toxicity, um, you are helping to bring down inflammation. Another piece about detoxification that I didn't touch on is that you can help your body obviously detoxify, but if you continue to bring in all of the chemicals from pesticides and you know uh, personal care items and household cleaners, you know it, you're still creating um, uh, you know challenge for your body. So you know right around the time that I was studying all of this, I started getting rid of all of my household cleaners that were not biodegradable. You know, I switched to seventh generation and my, there were so many brands that there are so many brands now that didn't exist back then. And with, you know, personal care items and makeup and skincare, you know, none of that existed back then. I got rid of all of my makeup, all of my skincare products and started using things that were safe you know, my rule of thumb was if it's safe enough to eat, then it's safe enough to put it on my skin because your skin is going to absorb it. So we're tackling inflammation by helping the, the intestines heal, by helping the liver regenerate, but then also more directly, we t mentioned these things a little bit ago, eating leafy greens, eating wild caught small fish. Also, when you're eating meat, chicken, and eggs, you want to eat grass-fed, free-range, no hormone treated um, animals that are eating their natural diet. So cows are supposed to eat grass. Chickens free, eat, go free, eat free range. They eat worms and bugs, but they also nibble on plants. They eat all sorts of things. So you want to eat, if you're eating meat, eggs, and even dairy, you want to have them come from healthy animals. Makes sense, right? 
Colorful foods we've mentioned, all of the rich pigments, and of course an omega-3 supplement is highly anti-inflammatory. And other anti-inflammatory support, vitamin D is extraordinarily important. It, unless you live in the tropics and you're going to the beach every week and you have a nice healthy tan, a nice healthy glow year round, you probably need to supplement vitamin D. I live in Vermont now and I know for a fact, I've talked to health practitioners who say there's not a single person who lives in a Northern hemisphere, in Vermont in particular, who is not vitamin D deficient if they're not supplementing. And vitamin D has a, a very important anti-inflammatory aspect to it. It has um, many thousands of processes in the body that it's involved with, and especially uh, with the functioning of the immune system. So vitamin D is hugely important. And then vitamin C and E are also anti-inflammatory. Sleeping, resting, not being overly stressed is anti-inflammatory. Eating cooling foods like vegetables and fruit, um, hydration, and reducing caffeine are also anti-inflammatory strategies. Now, here's the thing. All of these things are hugely important, but there's still one piece missing. When I took this picture in the spring of 2007, I was deep in doing detoxes all of that spring, and I was working on my intestinal permeability, and my skin would get better, and then I would get breakouts again like this. And so part of it was maybe my body still kind of adapting and working it all out. And, you know, maybe if I kept it going for a while longer, maybe it would have all healed. But I will tell you one thing that did happen without a shadow of a doubt. The night I took this picture, I was pretty desperate and I was feeling hopeless. And I took the picture because I was having kind of a moment where I said, I can't believe that my skin is this bad and I am determined to heal this. And maybe one day I'm gonna forget how bad it was. So I took the picture. And as I was in that place, I'm in standing in my bathroom and I'm looking at myself and I'm realizing how much pain, how much anger and shame I feel. And I realized I am waiting for my skin to be clear in order to love it. I'm waiting to have beautiful skin in order to love it. And I am realizing that my skin is never going to be beautiful unless I can love it. I had it the other way around. I needed to love my skin in order for it to heal. Because as it was, it was really expressing how much anger and shame I was feeling. And so as I was in this thought, I realized, what if rather than me feeling all of this kind of self-hatred, because I looked at my skin and I hated it, what if all of this anger, frustration, and self-hatred and shame are not because of the acne? What if the feelings are more so a cause of the acne? And I was in this kind of exploration and doing a lot of journaling. And then I moved to Vermont that summer. And in the fall of 2007, I went to a retreat in Arizona. And in Arizona, there was, uh, we were taken through a healing exercise around an old wound or trauma that we hadn't healed. And right as we were starting to do that exercise, I knew that there was something that had happened to me that I had not been able to deal with and I hadn't been able to talk about. And what had happened to me was that I was sexually assaulted in college. And I had had a vague awareness that my acne hadn't started before, that maybe it had started after I had been assaulted. And, but I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what to do with that. I'm like, oh, this is kind of curious that all of these health issues happened, started after this, but I didn't know what to do. So in this retreat, we started working on this, uh, you know, and healing a major wound or trauma. And so I started going through this exercise and I started finding for the first time in my life, an opening towards healing the intense anger, 
shame, self-hatred, and self-blaming that I had felt about that event. And so I came back to Vermont. I was feeling completely shifted. It was the first time that I was able to even get into a space of actual forgiveness and feeling free from the pain and victimization of having been the victim of sexual assault. And so this had been with me since college. It was now, you know, 12, close to 13 years later. And for the first time, I was starting to feel completely free from this memory. So that was in October of 2007. By January of 2008, I didn't have a trace of acne. And I know for a fact because I was in Vermont and I decided that I wanted to date and I created a match.com profile. And my pictures didn't have any acne. And I met a number of men. I started dating this guy and I never had acne again. So after 12 years of struggling and failing, after about a year and a half of starting to piece all of the elements together of the detoxification and the leaky gut and all of these things. And it was getting better, but still getting out, you know, breakouts. Finally, when I got to the emotional piece, that's when once and for all, it was completely gone, never came back. So your emotions absolutely play a role, period. And so science is proving just how our emotions play a role in our physical health. So I'm gonna mention three different scientific fields that I've become a fan of. I started learning about them about 10 years ago, and I, well, actually one of them, um, psycho, I'll mention the second one I heard about in the 90s, but epigenetics and stem cell biology. These are the fields where geneticists and stem cell biolo biologists are showing that the cellular environment, what is in the cell, including toxins, including emotions, are what determines gene expression. It isn't because you have a gene for acne or psoriasis or eczema that you have it. But what's in the cell is having that gene express itself. But if you change the environment in the cell, whether it's through detoxification and nutrition, or clearing the emotion, the, 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 the chemicals of shame and anger, clearing those emotions, clearing the toxins is gonna to change the cellular environment and then that gene doesn't express itself anymore. The second field is psychoneuroimmunology. This is a field that I first heard of in Venezuela when I was still living there. I met someone who was practicing psychoneuroimmunology, which is the combination of psychology with neurology, the nervous system, and immunology, where they have come to understand that our thoughts and our emotions will affect cellular behavior. And so classic example of psychoneuroimmunology is they tell people to visualize their white blood cell count increasing, and they take their blood before and after, and after the visualization, the blood cell count increased. So what you visualize, what you tell your body, what you think about will show up in your cells, but also all of our subconscious thoughts, all of our subconscious emotions are showing up in our cellular behavior. And the third feel is quantum physics, which is a hoot because quantum physics essentially says the observer, you, shapes the field. So you shape the field. You are the observer, the consciousness that is shaping your body without a doubt. Of course, what's shaping the observer is all of your lifestyle, all of your life programming, all of your beliefs, all of your upbringing, even beliefs like everybody in my family has acne. Everybody in my family has psoriasis. Everybody in my family has eczema. This is just the thing that we have. That is also part of what's shaping your field. So let me just make sure that I'm on track here. This is where we're going to dive into a writing exercise for you. So we're going to take about a minute for each one of these questions. Um, I want to invite you to grab a, a journal or a piece of paper and a pen and write about them. 
if you don't, if you're driving, if you're listening to this, then do your best. Um, but writing is always going to be more revealing than just thinking about these questions. All right. I'm not sure if we're going to need a minute for each question. So we'll see. So here's the first question. Write out what are the skin symptoms that you have. So just take a minute. I'm going to set the timer and write out the different symptoms. Pimples, blackheads, itchiness, pain, oozing, uh, scars, redness, heat, flaky patches. Just write out all of the different symptoms you have. And now I'm going to set the timer for another minute. Explore how do you feel about these symptoms? How, what emotions do you have about this issue? So take a minute, think about all of the different feelings and emotions you have about having the skin problem and how long you've had it. I'll give you some cues. Is there anger, frustration, hopelessness, shame, embarrassment, self-hatred like I felt, hopelessness, maybe I said that already, fear that it's never going to go away. That's the timer. The next question, where else in your life do you feel these emotions? And what other aspects of your life do you feel this way? And maybe you could take them one by one. Where else do you feel these emotions? And sometimes there are, there are emotions that we would rather not feel. So notice if there are any emotions that you have a particularly, a particularly hard time experiencing them or not, you, you try very hard not to feel that way. If you have hard emotions that you don't, that you have a hard time with, maybe you can underline those. To continue digging a little deeper and seeing what else you might find, the next question is, when did your skin challenges begin? So this might just, you know, doesn't need to take a whole minute. When did it begin? Roughly, you don't need to know exactly. See if you can remember a time when you didn't have the skin issue. When was that? What was happening in your life around the time that it started, that your skin challenges started? Or what happened just before or in the years before it started? It doesn't have to be immediate. 
Was there a major life change or life event? And have you noticed that maybe it's gotten worse? What happened or in your life around the time that it got worse? Or came back? Do you have times when it gets worse? Do you notice if you start to pay attention, when does it get worse? For some people it might be based on their menstrual cycle. For other people they know if they're stressed or anxious. Do you have times when it gets worse? And then finally, are there any major events in your life that you haven't touched on or you haven't acknowledged? Some events are so difficult that we don't even want to write or state that they existed, that they happened. I know that was the case for me. When I was in, at that retreat in Arizona, the way I realized that this was a thing for me is that I really did not want to write this guy's name. I didn't want to acknowledge that it had had that deep an effect on me. I didn't want it to matter. So when we've had events in our lives that are so, that we would rather they had never happened and we don't want them to have an effect in our lives, they're typically a big one. Okay, so I want to share with you what some of the emotions that Louise Hay, if some of you are familiar with Louise Hay, um, I want to share with you what are some of the emotions that she um, identifies as being connected or emotional patterns, mental patterns. Um, that connect with some skin issues. And so if you're not familiar with Louise Hay, she dedicated her life's work. She started in her 40s and 50s. She wrote a book called Heal Your, Lo Heal Your Body, uh, The Mental Causes for Physical Illness um, and the Metaphysical Way to Overcome Them. So there's a lo small little booklet version. There's a bigger book. The original book is bigger. And so she has an inventory of all sorts of health conditions. And she was able to trace patterns between when someone has acne, typically this is what's happening. So it isn't necessarily the truth, but it tends to be a really good directional arrow. It starts to give you an opening to explore uh, what might be some of the things underlying um, your skin issues. So I'm just going to go through some of the things that she lists. So for example, for acne, she says, uh, acne typically is connected with not accepting the self, disliking the self. And so I can tell you for myself, without a doubt, I had a lot of uh, personal shame and disliking myself. And I felt um, shame around getting myself in the situation where uh, I was sexually assaulted. And so this is classic in uh, sexual assault where the victim feels somewhat responsible and feels shame. Now, she also says for blackheads, small outbursts of anger. <laughs> I had a lot of blackheads when I was dealing with my acne, and there was definitely a lot of repressed anger. For many years, I would say, I'm not an angry person. I don't get angry. Well, guess what? Anger is a very healthy emotion that speaks of boundaries being violated, rights being violated. It's like that warrior in you that says, that's not okay. Well, that's anger. When we suppress it, when we don't learn how to express it, it you know comes out in blackheads and other things or crazy outbursts, right? When we don't appropriately express our anger. Eczema, she sees it as connected with breath breathtaking antagonism and mental eruptions, having kind of an antagonistic attitude towards life 
or towards something or someone else um, having kind of a, a mental, yeah, mental eruption. You can imagine kind of a, a volcano, right? psoriasis she sees as connected to a fear of being hurt the deadening of the senses and also to refusing to accept responsibility for our feelings and so psoriasis is an autoimmune condition and it's, so it's like the body attacking itself and so you know if you see the underlying energy potentially being as a fear of being hurt rather than you know the immune system reacting appropriately it's attacking itself and you know the the, uh, the refusal of taking responsibility for our feelings is also kind of an attack you want to blame someone else so you're kind of directing your um immune reaction towards something and it ends up attacking you know kind of coming back onto yourself Warts she sees as underlying little expressions of hate or a belief in ugliness. Skin problems in general she sees as being old buried guck, the buried guck that's just kind of coming out through the skin. The face in general represents what we show the world. I remember feeling like, you know, it was my most, you know, who I was as a woman was so challenged and so I remember feeling that connection that it, what I, I didn't like what I was showing the world through my skin now I have found through my own story and in the work that I've done I've you know my own story it was buried anger shame and self-hatred that was oozing out of my skin and the big emotions that I see involved in skin issues are, you know, kind of the anger, resentment, loathing, you know, that's all kind of the same vibration. Shame is uh, a, another one. Fear or anxiety, um, having intense fear, nervousness um, can show up in the skin. Powerlessness, victimization, blaming. And in some cases, grief. Grief is, is, a, is another one of like the core emotions, but I don't see it as often expressed in the skin. I see it, although, you know, maybe, um, maybe rashes, itchy things can be grief, but um, it's less common. So how do we help the heart heal? So here, I'm gonna show, share with you some of the techniques that I either use myself, so, um, I, I use journaling, of course, but I am particularly, I'm trained in EFT, which is emotional freedom technique, neuro-linguistic programming, and of course, in hypnosis. EMDR is also a very powerful technique um, that helps not only move through the emotions, but all of these things here, EFT, EMDR, neuro-linguistic programming, are very powerful um, in the healing of, of trauma as well. So um, I'm just looking at, uh, how did I write this, <laughs> this, uh, this slide? Okay, so, you know, in order to process emotions, you can use EFT, EMDR, and NLP, and of course, journaling. But then when it comes to healing the, you know, bigger wounds and even trauma of the past, you know, journaling isn't really going to do it. I don't, you know, I'm a trained counselor. Counseling, I don't find, you know, traditional talk therapy. Not only do I not find it, it's been proven to not be effective for trauma. When it comes to trauma, it really needs things, techniques like neuro-linguistic programming, hypnosis, encodement work, EFT or EMDR. These are the techniques that have really proven to help resolve trauma without re-traumatizing the person. Um, so these are things that you, some of these you can learn on your own. Of course, you can do journaling, you can do learn EFT on your own. There's lots of different programs to learn EFT and learn. EFT is also known as the tapping technique. And then some of these other tools you would need to work with a practitioner. So the four pieces essentially are 
healing the intestine to improve nutrient absorption and reduce inflammation. Healing the liver to reduce toxicity and also reduce inflammation. Reducing inflammation in general by the combination of these two things and also helping your, you know, giving your body the anti inflammatory nutrients. And then the fourth piece is healing the heart to release buried emotions. And so it was these four pieces together that finally, you know, once it all came together for me, I've just never had acne again. You know, my skin is still the best communicator I have. When things are a little bit off, I might get a little breakout. It's not the cystic acne. I might, you know, get a little pimples like, okay. And then it goes away in a day or two. Cystic acne, if any of you have had cystic acne, it is, it doesn't go away. It's pimples that might last three weeks. And once they finally go away, they leave a purple scar. I have never had that again. Um, so your skin is always going to be your best communicator. But when you're having a chronic, severe issue, you need to, you know, tackle the underlying source and, and the underlying cause and reverse the the perfect storm of the intestinal permeability and the congested liver and the inflammation. And then look, do I also have some emotions here that are helping to create the perfect storm in my cells to create leaky gut, to you know, weaken the liver? So for example, in Chinese medicine, anger is the emotion that congests the liver. So when I started realizing this, when I realized, oh, if I have severe cystic acne, clearly my liver is congested. So maybe I'm not that, you know, here I had been saying that for years that I was not an angry person. Huh. Maybe I do feel anger. I've just buried it so well that I never even realized it. And I had, I'd done a really good job of burying the anger. So the emotions, you can see how we are not one dimensional beings. We are not a machine, you know, give it the right nutrient and the machine works. We are emotional beings. We are human beings. We are multifaceted, multidimensional. The toxins play a role. The nutrients play a role. The emotions play a role. And you're either creating the ecosystem that manifests your skin issues or you're creating the ecosystem that manifests in radiant, gorgeous, glowing skin. So you can put all of these pieces together with your notes. You can ask me questions. You can send me emails. But I also want to share with you how I can help you. If you'd like my help, we can do this together. And so I've got, I'm gonna start a three month program. So the first month, we're gonna focus on detoxification, getting the liver regenerating. We, the very first week in the detox program is actually setting your vision. So you start right off by setting your vision and then we do four weeks of a gradual detox program where we put in all of the pieces that I mentioned and you get recipes and you get an assessment to help you pick the perfect supplements for you. And of course, you know, some of the basics that I mentioned today, then during the second month, we're going to switch, you know, as you come off of the detox, we're going to focus on rebuilding the digestive tract, which is already going to be doing really well because when you do a detox, you're going to be flushing your intestines out. So you're going to be helping the intestine already, but then we really, really focus on digestion and rebuilding the intestinal lining, giving your body the collagen and the nutrients it needs, and tying that in with reducing inflammation. So by the end of month two, you're going to be in a place where you are creating a lifestyle that isn't about being on a diet or anything like that, but where you're essentially living an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, which is what now what I do. I don't go on diets. I don't even do a whole lot of detox programs anymore because I'm constantly nourishing my liver, constantly rebuilding my digestion. I don't need to do a detox um, intensively anymore, but it's part of my lifestyle. And then 
in month three, we're going to dive into the heart healing. And, you know, this is the work that I've been doing now for the last, oh, is it five years that I've been doing trauma healing? Close to five years. And so we dive into with the tools that I have from neuro-linguistic programming and hypnosis and EFT and encodement work and, you know, dive into the pieces that are unresolved, the emotions that are buried, the tough life events that you haven't dealt with. And so essentially you, we do this and there's uh, all of the modules are, will be online for you to listen on your own, but we'll also have weekly group calls. For, for coaching, for support, we have an online forum, we have um, meditations and other recordings, and you're also, it also includes assessments at the beginning, a workbook, uh, recipes, and other tools throughout the three months. So it's essentially taking you through all of the pieces in essentially 12 weeks. And so you end up putting all of the pieces together. And so this, you can, you can find the link to the program on my page, thrivewithmorella.com forward slash radiant dash skin, radiant skin, radiant dash skin. And um, there's two different price points to two payment options. There's a single payment, which is 588, comes out to $49 a week. Or if you want to choose a monthly payment, it would be 220 uh, per month, three payments of 220 per month, and that's $55 a week. And because, so here's the thing, I'm only going to run, run this program if we have at least 10 people. So if you can share the program with someone, you both get a 15% discount, a BFF discount, and I'll give you a, a discount code because I do really need a minimum of 10 people to run this group. So if you know, anybody who wants to participate says, oh my God, this would be great. I really, really want to do this. Then get a friend, get a loved one. Even if they don't have skin issues, they can still do it because everybody needs to detoxify. Everybody needs to improve their digestion. Everybody needs to reduce inflammation. It may not be showing up in their skin. It may be showing up in arthritis or something else. But if we can have a group of people all working on their skin, it would be fantastic. Doesn't, isn't exclusive but it would be fantastic. If you have a friend who can come, who has a skin challenge they want to tackle as well, you both get 15% discount. And if they don't have skin issues, but they still think this would be great, um, you both still get the 15% discount. So, you know, reach out to me, let me know if you're interested. And um, the goal is to start the program mid-May. So we have some time because I'm going to be traveling. April's busy. So we're going to start the program mid-May. We have a few weeks to see who wants to join us for this. So it's going to be mid-May through essentially uh, mid-August. So June, July into mid-August, uh, we're going to be creating radiant skin from within. And we'll get to do it all together and support everyone in the group. So that's all I have for the class. I, uh, I'm going to stop the share and see if anybody has questions. Um, you can raise your hands if anybody has questions about any piece of it, about um, healing the liver. Wow, this light makes me... It, it's making it also red. Let me see if I turn this off. Oh, that's a little better. Um, any questions about healing the liver, healing the intestine, um, emotions, inflammation? You can raise your hand at the bottom. There should be a little hand, or you can type your question in the chat section. <clears throat> 